What is up everyone? Welcome back to Great Ace TV. And today I am going to be talking about a very recent story that happened just a couple weeks ago, and that is the tragic murder of Bianca Devins. Frustration tonight from the family of a 17 year old girl killed by a man police say posted photos of her body on social media. The mother saying that what's happening online makes the tragedy so much worse. Bianca Devins was 17 years old and from Utica, New York. And she had recently graduated high school and was actually looking forward to taking classes at a local community college later on this year. And in a statement, Utica police confirmed that she was killed on the early morning of July 14th, 2019. According to authorities, she and a 21 year old man went to a concert together that Saturday evening. And on the way back, they got into an argument, which carried on until they made it back to Utica early that Sunday morning. And the concert they went to was in Queens, if I remember correctly. So it was about 200 or so miles that this sort of argument built up and this anger between them or this anger in the male suspect grew to the point where once they got back to Utica, that's where everything happened. And the situation ended with the man pulling out a knife and stabbing Bianca. And the Utica police issued this statement shortly afterwards. During this time, it is believed that he took and distributed photographs of the killing on the Discord platform. The statement reads, Members of the Discord then viewed the images and posts and contacted the Utica Police Department. We can confirm that the images distributed of both the victim and the offender's injuries are authentic and occurred at the time of the incident. And according to other reports, these images were also posted on Instagram and 4chan, and they eventually made their way to Twitter as well. Now, as he was posting these pictures, members of the Discord and people who were friends of him on Snapchat and could see his story, they took screen grabs and they contacted the Utica Police Department. And the Utica Police Department actually mentioned that they received numerous calls, some even from people from other states concerned about what was going on. And the suspect himself actually called police and made comments alluding to the murder and comments that he was going to hurt himself in some way. And when officers arrived at the scene, he actually began stabbing himself in the neck. And while this was happening, an officer also noticed a tarp on the ground at the scene and there was brown hair sticking out from underneath it. The male advised him that the female was beneath the tarp and proceeded to pull out a cell phone. It was at this time that it's believed that the male took cell photographs of himself laying across the deceased female. Email. And yes, while all this was going on, while the police were there, while he was bleeding from the neck after stabbing himself, he was taking selfies of him and Bianca. And that's one of the main reasons why I'm not going to specifically say his name. I watch YouTubers like Philip DeFranco for one. I know he does not like mentioning people's names as far as the actual suspects. When they do things that makes it makes it seem as though one of their main reasons for doing it was for attention and definitely in this case he wants attention so i will not be saying his name i will not be giving out his social medias or anything like that even though i, I believe most of them were have been deactivated at this point but still i feel like his motive behind most of this was to garner attention for himself so he will not be getting attention from me and hopefully anyone else so thankfully officers were able to disarm him and he was taken to the hospital for his injuries from what i've read he is okay now and he has been charged with the second degree murder of bianca devins and he will be spending a lot of time in jail and so thankfully he didn't die so he can get the punishment he deserves for what he did now of course since this case happened so recently the police investigation is still ongoing and one of the things they can't figure out is exactly what Bianca and this man's relationship was. Uh, some media has reported that he was a s internet stalker. Some have reported that they've known each other for a while now. Others say that they were dating. Some say that they weren't. Some say that, and some say that they met online and things like that. And from what I've been able to gather from the different websites I've been to and the different articles I've read, I think it's a combination of most of those things. Um, from what I've gathered, they've known each other for two or so months. They met on Instagram. I don't necessarily know if they were in a relationship, but they were well enough or close enough to each other where their parents, their families actually hung out together at some point. So 
They knew each other. Their, of course, her family trusted him to take their daughter to this concert and return her safely. So they, their relationship was that much. I'm sure that if he, he was just this random stranger, her parents wouldn't be like, yeah, just go ahead and take my daughter to this concert. Why not? What's the worst that can happen? So they had some sort of relationship. He wasn't just a random person. And Bianca's family actually released a statement. And Bianca's family actually released a statement regarding the tragedy that happened, saying she was a talented artist, a loving sister, daughter, and cousin, and a wonderful young girl taken from us all too soon. The family also later stated, we are very grateful for the outpouring of love and sympathy we have received from our friends, family, Bianca's friends, and the whole community. Your prayers help to strengthen us through this difficult time. And of course, this story blew up on social media with a lot of people focusing on the photos shared of Bianca after she had been killed, as well as some of the other posts that the man who killed her posted during the murder, right before it, and right after it. And some of the first people to talk about this murder were, of course, the members of the online community called 4chan. I don't know if you guys have ever been there. I've been on 4chan a couple of times. It's a pretty wild place, but I don't see it as anything bad or something that shouldn't exist. But it is a pretty, it's a, it's a pretty wild place. And by Sunday evening, the hashtag RP Bianca was trending. And this of course was used for good and bad. Some people were reposting the images on Twitter on Instagram of Bianca and other people did try to fight back and they were posting nice images of her while she was still alive. They were posting like sort of pink backgrounds in honor of Bianca. And they were also just posting their condolences saying how tragic this event was and that it shouldn't have happened, which it shouldn't have and things of that nature. But of course it's the internet, so you're gonna see both sides of it. You're gonna see the bad and the good. The thing that I found interesting was that before Bianca's death, her main Instagram account had about 2,000 subscribers. And in the week following her death, it rose to more than 160,000 subscribers. So I personally thought that was very interesting how that sort of happened. I mean, people heard about her and I guess their initial reaction was, well, let me follow her. And maybe by going through her Instagram account, the pictures that she posted, I can kind of learn about the person that she was. But unfortunately, the same can be said about her killer. His Instagram account actually gained a lot of followers after he did this, which is probably something that he wanted to happen. And BuzzFeed News actually obtained some of the posts he made on his Instagram story the night of the murder, which were pretty cryptic. Some were movie quotes, and there was actually one where he changed the bio in his Instagram to where he put his day of death as that Sunday. July 14th of 2019. So it is believed that he was very much actually trying to kill himself when the police got there. But thankfully, like I said, they were able to stop him so he can face these charges for the crime that he committed. But I just thought I thought that was very interesting that he went as far as to change as to put his time of death on his Instagram. Of course, that probably raised some red flags. And in the aftermath of Bianca's death, of course, the conversation of how much social media should allow as far as what can be posted and what can be said, of course, that came up. And I don't want to digress too much on this because this is about Bianca, but I don't think that regulating social media will change anything. I think Instagram did a very good job of getting rid of the posts as good as they could. Um, you got to remember, these are large scale companies. When something happens in the United States, in a very small portion of the United States, it doesn't even matter if it does end up trending at some point. When it happens in such a small portion of their very large market, they're not gonna see it as quickly as we do as people who just use their websites. Plus, most of the stuff is run by AI anyway. So you can't expect them to do but so much in so much time. So I don't really blame any of the platforms in general for what gets said on them. And I don't believe that by trying to put a little more control in these social media platforms, that's not gonna stop people from doing shitty things. Shitty people do shitty things. Doesn't really matter how hard it will be for them to do those things, they'll find a way to do it if that is what they want it to do. So you can't really stop people from being who they are. So I don't think that social media can really be blamed for what's going on. I just think it allows us to see what's going on a lot more clearly and a lot easier than it was before 
when we had to depend on news to we had to depend on news stations and newspapers to give us this information. So I I more look towards the positives of having social media than the negatives, but that argument's always going to come around when something like this happens where it seems as though the person who committed these crimes did it specifically to get for lack of better terms clout on social media. But back to the Bianca story, one of the negatives that came out of this was people taking advantage of her death. And they did that by posting comments saying, follow me, DM me for the pictures of Bianca. Uh, other people changed their usernames to as close as they could to Bianca's username on her Instagram so they could gain followers from that. And attention is a drug. I say this all the time. And sometimes people just, they go a little too far with it. Saying DM me, Sub um, subscribe. Some people were doing this on YouTube too. Subscribe to my videos. Um, follow me. Add me on Snapchat. Things of that nature. So I, if you want to see these pictures of her, even though a lot of them probably weren't distributing these pictures, even even saying that you would just to get followers and DMs and things like that, that's pretty that's pretty low. And I'm sure a lot of these people don't mean to come off as bad as they they will, but you can't do stuff like that. That's pretty. That's pretty horrible and that's been happening for a while now with celebrity deaths with deaths like this there's always going to be people who are using it to garner attention for themselves to make some sort of personal gain from it and the same could be said for me i'm i'm making a video about it who's to say i'm not doing this just for a financial gain or for a popularity gain or things of that nature and I guess for me personally, the way I look at it is I'm reporting news. I'm not doing anything that a news reporter wouldn't do that a news. I'm not saying anything. Well, I'm probably saying things that news reporters might not say, but that's just because they have a entire company looking at them and it's just me making videos on my camera in my room. But to post, to make posts and to try to gain notori notoriety through someone's death, that is pretty low, especially when you're not really helping the situation at all. Like you're literally like some people you're changing your name to match hers so that you get subscribers you're telling people that if they subscribe oh well, subscribe but you're telling people that if they follow you uh you will send them the pictures of her body at like when she was dead like that that's pretty low um so of course like i said earlier the bad part of the internet is going to come out in situations like this but so is the good part her family got a lot of support they got a lot of, there were a lot of comments sending their condolences to the family because this is a horrible situation where they lost their young daughter, like the statement said, the daughter, a daughter, a sister, a cousin who had her whole life ahead, ahead of her. And we have to remember that. And that's kind of where I want to end the video. Uh, this event like this is very tragic and it's of course, it's going to happen more and more just because of how this society is at this point, but that's not going to make it any less tragic. So let's remember Bianca Devins for what she did before she was killed. She was a high school graduate looking to start college and basically start her life because she was 17 years old, so her life hadn't even begun yet. So let's send our prayers and our condolences to her family. But that is where I'm going to end the video. So let me know what you guys think about it. Leave comments, make sure to like, subscribe, do all that good stuff if you haven't already. And I will catch you next video. So have a great day, great week, great month, great year. And I will see you next time.